Well, let's bring in our Tuesday gaggle. Trip Baird from Heritage Action for America, a group that opposes the UN Disabilities Treaty. Democratic pollster Margie O'Mara and Nathan Gonzalez from the Rothenberg Report and Roll Call. So, Trip, as promised, yesterday we were speaking with some folks at Heritage Action. You guys wanted to explain, give you a proper form to explain your opposition to this treaty. So, why do you oppose this treaty? Well, we appreciate you having us on. Uh, well, you're. Your guest yesterday, uh, Governor Thornburg, said that this would extend the ABA to 650 million people around the world. Actually, that's not true. He ended up, if you replayed what he said, he actually contradicted himself and he said, it's really not that binding. There's nothing to see here. Why shouldn't, you know, no one should oppose it. The, the, the story everyone needs to understand is we've been a leader in mm -hmm. the rights for disabled around the world. We will not actually sign the treaty will give leadership to some you know so-called experts on disabilities in Geneva every year that tells us what to do so I think there's a sovereignty issue there we, we don't need to see leadership we've been the leader on this issue for but isn't decades. there a sense of where the American business community should know that they have a level playing level playing field when it comes to so here in the United States they know they have to abide by the ADA Act sure. why shouldn't they know that it's it's a uh, that they're doing business in the same way around the world well, other countries that want to want to uh, give rights to the disabled or free to sign the treaty and get to work passing the same laws we've passed over the last 20 years. So I think uh, there's nothing stopping these countries from doing this anyway. It's not, uh, us signing this treaty does not bind any country or make any country do anything. So we don't really see the point in the treaty other than giving these experts more authority. Are, which, are you going to win? You think you've got the vote? I think we're going to win. I think we're about four or five votes ahead of them right now, and so I think I'm, I'm not predicting it just yet. We'll know at noon. Nathan, what's interesting here, and you follow the Senate uh, politics pretty closely, is that what we're seeing is is, is sort of a, a growing divide inside the Republican Party between um, sort of the old foreign policy guard, the Dick Lugers, the John McCain's of the world, versus this new foreign policy guard. Some of it's led by John Kyle, who's not an isolationist, if you will. Um, there is some isolationist views there, but it, it's it's an interesting interesting divide that is sitting in the Senate. Right, and sometimes, in some ways it's not even a divide anymore. Some of those senators aren't even a part of the caucus anymore. But I think with this issue, part of it is that, you know, to say that there's skepticism, overall skepticism about the UN mm -hmm. among some of the Republican Party, uh, you know, it's probably an, an understatement. And I think this just digs, you know, deeper into into some of that, uh, you know, deep-rooted skepticism of the, of the body in general. All right, I want to move to fiscal cliff here. Uh, Margie, this is, a, there's a mix of public opinion and public public policy here. Uh, Democrats feel as if they're winning the public opinion war, but that isn't going to get them 218 votes. So uh, at what point does winning the public opinion war sort of become diminishing returns? Well, I don't think it becomes diminishing returns. I mean, you see consistently that uh, the exit poll showed that people not just support President Obama, but support seeing the wealthy pay a little bit more in taxes. Half of the electorate said that. An additional little bit said everybody should pay a little bit more. So mm -hmm. a clear majority said that. Uh, consistently, Washington Post poll showed right after the election and again now that more people would blame Republicans than the president if there is no deal. Um, so I think Republicans need to really tread carefully. Uh, look, I think it hurts everybody politically if we go over the fiscal cliff, but ultimately Republicans are going to pay a larger price. So it's about making sure they don't drive themselves off a middle class cliff by mm -hmm. digging their heels uh, in to have lower rates, actually have lower rates for the wealthy than we have currently. Now, now Tripp, you work for a group who's, you know, you're, you're trying to say, hey, we, we stand for principles, but you're not there to win elections. You're there to win right. policy fights. Um, right. But the fact is, you if, if there, Republicans could be some conservatives could be pulling Republicans away from being able to win swing voters. What do you well, say hopefully to that? good policy makes good politics. Uh, in this case, if, if say we concede the, the tax issue, but that's not going to fix the problem. The drivers of the debt or what is spending, but also is entitlements. And Boehner punting, basically capitulating to the White House yesterday in his letter saying, we're not going to take You call it a capitulation, and the White House doesn't even call it a there's serious proposal. There's that divide proposal. again. I mean, there's, I mean that's, a, that's a pretty... Well, do we I mean, all, do we, we're all going to put our heads in the sand and say that entitlements aren't the driver of the deficit? And our long-term fiscal cliff is, I mean, you don't think some he people put enough think we're already off he the put cliff. entitlements there. You don't think he put enough detail on entitlements? No. Well, that'll be interesting to think. We'll get him to answer that question when we come back. Trivia time, we ask how many current senators are named John? 
Any spelling of the name counts. The answer is 12. By the way, Johnny Isaacson didn't know the answer to this trivia question. Here's the list. Look at this. Barrasso, Bozeman, Cornyn, Hoven, Isaacson, Carey, Kyle, McCain, Tester, and Thune. Then there's Jay Rockefeller and Jack Reed. Their given names are John. And that's not even counting the two senators whose last names are Johnson. We'll be right back. In name trivia, you needed to know. Let's bring back our gang, uh, gaggle, Trip Baird, Margie O'Mara, Nathan Gonzalez. Margie, we've had the fun little eavesdropping on all of the strategists at Harvard, and they all talk about you know, what, could, what they would have done differently, at least on the losing side. And Matt Rhodes was uh, the campaign manager for Mitt Romney, disagreed with Stuart Stevens on one big issue, and that was immigration. Rhodes said he regretted their turn to the right on immigration for that three-week period that Rick Perry came in. Yeah, I think I think he's right. To, I mean, you think, I think that was bigger than any other moment? Do you think immigration, the single biggest issue for, for the Republicans is this Hispanic issue? I, I, I don't know if I'd say that far. I think it was one of the issues, and it certainly adds to the sense that Republicans are not fighting for all Americans. And when you have them take that really hard turn to the right, it, it also really adds a very corrosive element to our language. I mean, you see Messina, and he talks about super PACs. That's a tactic, that's a strategy yeah. that voters ultimately don't notice or don't care about. But when you talk about immigration, I mean, that really changes how people view the Republican Party, how people view other Latina voters, their fellow American voters. And I think it's it's uh, it's damaging. Nathan, it was us. tone. I mean, that's what you talk about to a lot of her. It was tone that some Hispanic voters say, you know, yeah, they may be culturally more conservative, but they're not listening to the Republicans until they change. Their right. Mind. It was that personal disconnect that, yeah. that did Mitt Romney. In it. But what I think it's interesting is what Republicans think they have to say to get the nomination. Yeah. Do they really have to do that? You know, would he have lost the nomination? Do you think that, immigration sure. politics is going to start fading away? No. You I don't think it'll in the be conservative here. movement? I you think still think it's going to be a hot sure. button? I think next year we'll see All right. a movement. To Sh shameless plugs. Trip, go. Shameless plug. Um, go to Heritage Jackson website. Um, for all your, if you look, want to get involved in the grassroots effort for the conservative movement, absolutely. Heritage right. Jackson. Margie. I have a post at Huffington Post, pollster on a poll uh, my firm did with Republican pollster Bob Carpenter for Mayors Against Illegal Guns and uh, the NRA influences on the wane and voters want stronger gun laws. Take a look. All right, you brought a problem. Last week, uh, our softball team, Category 5, three straight championships, 30, uh, 30 game winning streak. 30 right. game winning 30 streak. 30 game winning streak. That is truly shameful. That's it for this edition of the Daily Rundown. We'll see you.